Paul McCartney has always had a pretty laid-back persona, but the former Beatle has apparently been seething about a nickname he's had for 60 years. The Beatles came from humble beginnings to become both the biggest selling and arguably the most influential rock band of all time. The four lads from Liverpool, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr, were said to have shook the world. Their 1964 arrival in the U.S. and subsequent coast-to-coast -coast broadcast performances on The Ed Sullivan Show kick-started what became known as Beatlemania. Becoming so famous so fast would almost certainly be stressful. The movie A Hard Day's Night showed tense dashes through mobs of fans just to get to a car after performance. But in his book, 1964, Eyes of the Storm, McCartney recalled that the experience was just what he had been craving. He wrote, You might think that all this was terrible, that it was painful, and that we felt like animals in a cage. I can only speak for myself, but I did not feel that way. This was something we had always wanted. That said, there was one key element of that early fame that stuck in McCartney's craw. Each Beatle had a nickname distilling them down to one trait. George was the quiet one, Ringo was the funny one, John was the smart one, and Paul was the cute Beatle. The cute? The cute Beatle? Yes, that's what they called you. McCartney hated it then and continued to be annoyed by it decades later. In an interview with the Daily News in 1989, he said, I'm not comfortable with being the cute Beatle. I've never really thought I was cute, though I guess some people think so. Maybe there were a few moments of cute, mostly in the early days. As you get older, the harder edges come out. McCartney was still complaining about it into the 2020s. He said in the 2020 interview on The Howard Stern Show, That's what happens. He just, he's the cute one. I go, no, I'm yeah. not. Don't call me that. I hate that, you know. But yeah. once it's said, it kind of sticks. Even though he's accomplished quite a bit as a solo artist and with his band Wings in the more than 50 years since the Beatles broke up, it's his time with the Fab Four that people still remember most. He has taken steps to honor the band's legacy accordingly, through his spearheading of the Anthology Project in the 1990s. He also helped along the blockbuster 2021 Peter Jackson documentary, Get Back, and collaborated with Starr on finishing the band's final song, Now and Then, which was released in 2023. The cute moniker has stuck with McCartney despite his contention that it wasn't a nickname that really fit him. As late as 2016, McCartney was described as cute in a review of his biography published by the Columbia Dispatch. The word even made its way into articles marking his 80th birthday in 2022. McCartney obviously couldn't change the boyish good looks that brought him millions of adoring fans in the Beatles' early days, but he and his bandmates could certainly signal their growing maturity through their music, particularly from 1965 onward. The album Rubber Soul came out late that year, marking a turn toward a harder edge in their songwriting. In the Beatles' anthology, McCartney recalled playing Bob Dylan some tracks from the band's celebrated 1967 album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, to which Dylan responded, I get it, you don't want to be cute anymore. McCartney says the band felt they had turned a corner toward maturity with the release of Rubber Soul. He said, We'd had our cute period, and now was time to expand. 